Thank you all so much for joining us on very short notice uh, for today's uh, media availability. Friends, on January 22, 1973, the United States Supreme Court wrongly decided Roe versus Wade, and it has been wrong ever since. Millions of innocent lives were lost over the decades since that decision. Which one of those innocent lives could have cured cancer, could have cured Alzheimer's, could have changed the world for the better? But today, as the Attorney General for the State of Arkansas, I want to invite you all here to give you accurate information after the draft opinion that was reported last night regarding the case before the United States Supreme Court and Dobbs v. Jackson. We have many laws and cases on abortion that could be impacted by this decision if that draft is in fact final. I want to make myself and my team at the Attorney General's office available to each of you to be able to answer questions again should that draft become final. Last night, America and the world experienced an unprecedented leak of information coming from the U.S. Supreme Court. The Dobbs case, which was argued by Mississippi, would give states the right to make abortion illegal. My office has successfully litigated at the highest court, and I deeply respect the court's long-held tradition of confidential deliberations. It is disturbing that such a leak occurred, and I am pleased, however, that an investigation has been opened, and I am confident that the responsible party will be held accountable, and we pray that the justices in the majority remain firm in their decision. As your Attorney General, and even before, I have a long history of fighting for unborn babies. And that is why Arkansas, for the second year in a row, has been named the most pro-life state in the United States of America. Arkansas is the most pro-life state in America because of my team's efforts to defend the laws that are passed by our General Assembly and to protect young innocent life from radical organizations such as the ACLU and Planned Parenthood. I will not stop fighting for the unborn in Arkansas, in the region, in the United States. Like many of you and many Arkansans and Americans, last night when I glanced down at my phone, I was sitting at dinner listening to Arkansas's own media giant Rex Nelson give a speech at the Hope Chamber of Commerce. And I glanced down at my phone and I saw this news report come through. It rattled me beyond belief. But, and I immediately thought, oh my gosh, is this happening? But then when I saw that it was a draft opinion, I questioned its veracity, just as many of you did. Today, we learned by the court of the authenticity of this draft. I reminded my team, and I remind each of you, remember where you were when you learned of this news, because you will want to tell your children and your grandchildren exactly where you were and exactly what you were doing in this critical moment of our nation and the world. Arkansas is prepared for the overturning of Roe versus Wade. In 2019, Arkansas passed Act 180, a trigger law that bans and bars abortions in the event that the Supreme Court does in fact overrule Roe and Casey. Under that law, in the event that Dobbs does indeed overrule Roe and Casey, it will be my responsibility as the Attorney General of the State of Arkansas to certify that the United States Supreme Court has overruled Roe and Casey so that way Arkansas can immediately ban abortions and that will take effect immediately. In the event that this decision, this draft that we saw does in fact become final, it will be my honor and a privilege of my lifetime to do just that. There are several cases that are impacted should this draft be final and Roe be overturned. I'm going to walk through some of those and afterwards I will make myself and more importantly 
Nick Brawny, who is my Solicitor General, available for any questions that you all may have. In Little Rock Family Planning versus Rutledge, which is the Down Syndrome 18-week ban case, it prohibits a practitioner from performing an abortion if the woman is seeking the abortion solely on the basis of a, of a diagnosis of Down Syndrome. The challenge law also bans abortions starting at 18 weeks. There is a cert petition before the United States Supreme Court pending at this time. In Hopkins versus Jegley, this is commonly referred to as the dismemberment or sex selection case. Under the Arkansas Unborn Child Protection from Dismemberment Abortion Act, it protects unborn babies from the barbaric practice of being dismembered while still alive in the mother's womb. The law also bans sex selective abortions. Currently, this case is, there's an injunction and it's on appeal, the Eighth Circuit. Pending Dobbs, uh, the case has been stayed pending the outcome of the Dobbs case. The next case that we have is Planned Parenthood versus Gillespie. The state was sued in 2015 after DHS terminated Planned Parenthood's Medicaid contracts with the state. The current status is that Planned Parenthood remains terminated as a Medicaid provider. Discovery in the case has been stayed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. In Little Rock Family Planning versus Jegley, commonly referred to as the total ban case or SB6, which was the Senate Bill 6, SB6 would create the Arkansas Unborn Child Protection Act and would ban most abortions in the state except to save the life of the mother during a medical emergency. This case is on appeal uh, for an injunction and it has been stayed pending the outcome in Dobbs. Under Arkansas law, if the court overturns the court holdings of Roe and Casey, a total ban would go into effect. Whatever the scope of the court's decision, it will impact several of our cases in Arkansas. The Down syndrome case, which I referred to earlier, has not had any official action by the U.S. Supreme Court, but we believe that that petition is being held pending resolution because it stopped being considered at conference. Both the Arkansas Unborn Child Protection Act, SB6, and our dismemberment cases have also been placed on hold by the Eighth Circuit. So at this time, I will invite the Solicitor General, Nick Brawny, who has uh, worked in depth on many of these cases up, and we'll open it up to any questions that you all have. Andrew. Uh, um, General or, uh, or, or uh, Nicholas, uh, can you kind of walk through the mechanics of this uh, in terms of the trigger ban? I know you talked about certification. Is there any other legislation that would be needed and with the different bans that Arkansas has passed over the years, is, would there need, need to be anything passed to address any uh, contradictions or anything uh, among them? You know, beyond the certification, sure. what, what, else need, what else would need to be done? The certification is the key procedural point. And that is laid out in the, the statute itself. And we can provide copies of that. But again, that is Act 180 of 2019. Nick, I don't know if you want to add any in-depth procedure. No, I, the pre, so the procedure set out in the bill is basically the Attorney General certifies that the core holdings of Roe and Casey have been overruled. And the moment she does that, the act becomes effective. In addition to that, there's also, as the Attorney General mentioned, a, a total ban case currently pending in the Eighth Circuit. That case, um, obviously that injunction couldn't stand if, if Dobbs overrules Casey. The, the, diff the differences between the total ban and the ban as outlined in the in the trigger law. Can you kind of walk walk through sure. uh, and which would uh, I guess which would uh, kind of supersede? They're basically the same law. So the 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 ban itself is exactly the same. The confines of the ban ban is exactly the same. The penalties associated with both bans are exactly the same. They're essentially the same law. It's just one was passed later and was enjoined. The other one, the trigger law obviously never went into effect because you need a certification from the Attorney General that Roe and Casey have been overturned. So that would only go into effect in the event those are overturned and the Attorney General certifies that overruling. But the, the scope and coverage of those two statutes is, is identical. Good question. 
Um, being devil, devil's advocate here, but let's say this summer we find out that they don't overturn Roe v. Wade. What are you going to do as the Attorney General for Arkansas? Well, sure, and I think that's an important question you ask, and uh, that it's it's important for Arkansans and Americans to understand that this is a a draft opinion, but we understand that uh, misinformation is. Uh, often circulated and flies around in speculation. Uh, once the court issues its final decision, uh, and again, this was an unprecedented leak, uh, something that rips at the seams of our judiciary and trust in the judiciary and amongst uh, the justices themselves. And but once the final decision is made, then we will read it and we will offer a a memorandum and you know and certainly have another opportunity for the members of the media and Arkansans to to have guidance uh, very akin I shared with my team this is very akin to when the Obergefell decision uh, came down with regard to same-sex marriage uh, immediately our team put together a memorandum and I made media appearances to ensure that Arkansans uh, state agencies understood the impact of the Supreme Court decision on our own laws that pastors, justices of the peace, others who were engaged in performing marriage ceremonies understood what they could and could not do under the law. And so we'll be, we are prepared uh, and are in the process of you know, making certain that we have everything we need for the certification to go forward as if this draft opinion is final. And we are hopeful and prayerful that this draft opinion has given us a large window into the future. We hate the reason why we have this draft opinion available, but I am encouraged by the draft opinion, but we are prepared either way. Uh, but we will have to read, you know, when, when we say immediate, um, it is important for people to understand that we're going to read this opinion and to make sure that we understand the legal ramifications of it before we jump on uh, social media and claim to do something, because it is my responsibility as the Chief Legal Officer for the State of Arkansas to ensure that we follow all of the laws. Does this mean that you will hold back bringing this up during campaigning? I don't, I don't even know what that question means, and I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm just, <laughs> no, I understand. Is this, would you say that this is a case that you probably will not be bringing up during the campaign, or are you saying that this, since this is now out there and that this is something you're willing to discuss? Well, I don't think any, you know, anything has been off the table uh, in terms of my campaign for lieutenant governor. Uh, I have certainly uh, spent a great deal of time in the media as well as in speeches talking about my pro-life stance and what we have done at the attorney general's office uh, defending pro-life laws and helping to craft those laws in Arkansas. Uh, I think it's important as the attorney general to talk about uh, this case and to make sure that we offer clarification to Arkansans about uh, what this draft decision means and what it can mean in final and then certainly uh, what the status of the laws are in Arkansas. Um, General, this, this ruling has raised concerns of, of, uh, about what does this mean for other uh, rulings that had been considered, uh, settled law or other landmark rulings. Obergefell uh, is one, one of the rulings that, that there are uh, a lot of concern about now. Do you think Arkansas and other states, if this is the final the ruling regarding the overturning road, do you think Arkansas and other states uh, should seek uh, a reversal of the Obergefell ruling? Well, I think that we need to focus on the issue at hand, which is the uh, Roe versus Wade and abortion. And so that's, you know, I, I think that those who are promoting ideas are only trying to garner public support and that's why we had this politically motivated leak um, that well, we, the court has decided Obergefell. It is the, the law in the United States at this time. And so we need to focus on uh, what this decision is and not look for uh, scare tactics that those who disagree with perhaps my politics or politics of others uh, you know, might do in the future. I think that's I think it's nothing more than a scare tactic and I think that's why we're seeing one individual or a number of individuals who took it upon themselves to rip at the seams of the United States of America and this on our justice system the person who leaked this or the individuals who leaked this is no different than those who wished to tear down our capital on January 6 this is an act of insurrection 
ripping at the seams, breaking that confidentiality. I guess going back to the, mecha the mechanics of this, just make sure I understand. So certification, the, the ban is in effect immedi uh, immediately, or is there any, any delay between certification when, when the ban takes effect, and who, uh, how is it enforced? Sure, and so yes, so upon certification, and that's the one uh, trigger, uh, the Roe versus Wade being overruled, I will determine with my team whether or not it has in fact been overruled, and then we will certify and hold a certification and announce publicly that yes, it has. Uh, enforcement will depend on, and well, I'll have to bring Nick back in for this, but in terms of clinics or otherwise who might be Physicians, is that your question, Andrew? Yeah, yeah, I guess like, yeah, like how, how, is, it for, how is it enforced? Uh, exactly. Well, you know, the same as uh, our laws are enforced now through the Department of Health and others, uh, that, and that we would be able to uh, take action and to shut down those who are practicing in violation of law in Arkansas. I don't know the, if you want to add the, anything. The only thing I'll add to that is, is the, the sort of, both the total ban that's on appeal and the certification, the trigger law, both have criminal penalties, so they would be enforced through criminal actions. So they're like, like local, local prosecutors, basically? Yes. And those would be penalties against, against, the, uh, against the providers? Against somebody who performs an illegal abortion, yeah. Any other questions? Well, again, thank you all. I think this is important as uh, we're in uncharted territory and waters to, um, to make ourselves available as the state's chief legal officer and to make my team available to answer questions so that way uh, we can accurately inform Arkansans about where our laws stand. Uh, the, the last thing that we need uh, following unprecedented leak is to have misinformation uh, being shared, uh, certainly through our media outlets, but Absolutely, we don't need our kids in sharing misinformation about where our laws stand. So with that, I appreciate you all very much for taking the time to be here today. Thank you.